Our situation sucks, yes, but I'm telling you more stimulus is not the answer. If you follow any finance YouTube channels, you'd see that all they talk about is stimulus checks. Take me Kevin for instance. In just the last 7 days, he posted 29 videos of which 25 were about stimulus checks. And this is 2 months after the lockdown started. I mean stimulus is good and all at the start, but at one point, we have to consider how much money is the government actually giving away and what are the long term repercussions. So starting off, how much stimulus has even been given out so far? Well, Congress has passed 4 stimulus packages which add up to 3 trillion dollars. Oftentimes, when we talk about big businesses and the government, we lose perspective of how big these numbers really are. So let's just take a step back and try to understand how much this really is. Even if you earned $1 every single second that you're alive, which comes out to $30 million a year, it wouldn't take you 100 or 500 or even 10,000 years. It would take you 32,000 years just to make 1 trillion. So 3 trillion would take 96,000 years or almost 100 millenniums. Some estimates say that our entire species has only been around for that long. Furthermore, $3 trillion would be enough money to fund the entire economic activity of every single country in the world for a full year except 5. And it doesn't just stop right here either. The House of Representatives just passed another $3 trillion of relief. Now this will almost definitely be stopped by the Senate. But the notion that $6 trillion of stimulus was even considered is absurd. Now you might be saying, America is much different than all of those other countries as the economy is much bigger. So 3 trillion or 6 trillion is appropriate for the US. Well then, let's take a look at the 2008 recession and see how the US responded to that. After everything was said and done, they did spend 2.8 trillion dollars as economic relief. But this was 3 trillion over 2 years, not 6 trillion over 2 months. Additionally, this was split into several different mediums to alleviate the pressure of giving out so much money. Taking a look at where this money was spent, we can see the largest portion was spent on the 2010 tax bill. First of all, we should note that this was not even passed until 2010, and all this accomplished was extend Bush's tax cuts for the middle class. It didn't give people money, it just allowed them to pay less. Next up, we have TARP or the Troubled Asset Relief Program. This was basically a bailout for irresponsible banks and didn't hand out any money straight to people. This is the same case with the Fannie and Freddie Mae portion. The other portion was mostly spent on public work projects like schools and roads. So that leaves us with two portions, the Obama stimulus and the Bush stimulus. Again, even both of them put together doesn't even add up to 1 trillion. Let's first dive into the Obama stimulus or the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Out of the $787 billion injected, they only gave out $260 billion in direct payments. Though these are labeled as direct payments, once again, most of these were in the form of tax credits and deductions. In fact, only $14.2 billion were actually given out in checks and these went to social security beneficiaries and veterans pensions, not everyone on the face of the planet. President Bush spent a lot more on direct stimulus checks at $120 billion and these are actually very similar to how today's checks are structured, but the amount given was exactly half of what is given out today. As you can see, the amount given out over just the past 2 months is unprecedented and is exponentially more than has ever been given out in US history or any other country's history. It wouldn't be that bad if we at least knew that it worked. But President Bush's attempt at this has made it clear that it is really ineffective. First of all, it takes months to even receive this check for most people. And people who received stimulus checks from President Bush rarely spent it as intended. 32% of recipients straight up put this money into savings. Let's just be clear here, this money is not given out to inflate people's savings. Anyways. 48% was spent on paying off debt and only 20% was actually spent in the economy. Again, 
This money is also not given out to help people pay off debt either, but at least to help these people in some way, unlike the 32% who were just increasing their personal savings. But this doesn't change the fact that only 20 cents out of every dollar given out was spent as intended. I mean, it's nice that it helped people with their debt, but this is a stimulus check. It's meant to stimulate the economy, not pay off debt. So in essence, stimulus checks have historically shown us that they are very ineffective at helping the economy. And here's the thing, the last time $2.8 trillion was given out over 2 years with very little directly going to people, the US debt doubled from 10 to $20 trillion. Of course, this was not all caused by the recession. But just imagine the damage $6 trillion being spent in just 2 months could cause. That is literally more than total tax revenue over an entire year. Furthermore, our GDP to debt ratio was in the 60s and 70s back then. Now we're already above 100, meaning we have more debt than our annual GDP. I made a video recently going over the exact economic impact of stimulus checks and showed that the main risk was the debt load. But given the situation, I did say stimulus checks were warranted and I still stand by that. In the beginning, we were uncertain of how long the situation would last and its economic impact. So the first round of stimulus checks was fine. It wasn't the most effective method to deal with the economic recession, but it did help a good amount of people. But to expect a second, third round, $2,000 a month for everyone making under $130,000 a year? What the hell is even that? America is not a socialist country and we need to stop trying to make it one. But even aside from the socialist argument, giving out more money would be terrible for the country's debt. And we need to start looking at the long term impact rather than short term ineffective solutions. But that's just what I think. If you guys disagree, feel free to sound off in the comments. But if you guys agree, then consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.